Before we get started with Superbase, what is Superbase? Let's jump over to superbase.com. So Superbase markets itself as an open source Firebase alternative. Like Firebase, Superbase gives us an all-in-one backend solution. It makes it really easy for us to add an out-of-the-box backend to our app without having to worry about complicated setup, scalability, and other factors. And we can hook our app up to this backend with a really simple JavaScript API. So Superbase gives us a database, although unlike Firebase's proprietary Firestore and real-time databases, which are NoSQL databases, Superbase gives us a SQL database, a PostgreSQL database. And this means that instead of storing our data in JavaScript type objects, we'll be storing our data in tables with rows and columns. Superbase gives us authentication so that we can easily register, log in and log out our users. And it gives us edge functions. And these are like Firebase's cloud functions. And these allow us to add extra backend functionality to our app without having to set up an extra backend application. So for example, we could use these to interact with APIs. We can even use them to interact with our database, our authentication and our storage. And we can use these to execute any code that we don't want to execute on the front end. Superbase gives us storage so that we can store files and allow the user to upload files, such as videos and images. And like Firebase, Superbase gives us real-time capabilities so that if a user is running your app on two different devices and they make a change on one device, they'll instantly see the change on the other device. And it also has vector for creating AI applications. And it allows us to set up RESTful APIs to interact with our data in case we don't want to use the default Superbase API. Although in this course, we will be using the default Superbase API. Help me out with a quick like, comment, share, or subscribe. But one of the best selling points of Superbase is that it's all based on open source technologies. You can take your entire Superbase instance and run it locally. You can change the core Superbase code if you want to, and you can deploy your Superbase instance to your own server or deploy it to a cloud hosting provider such as DigitalOcean. Or you can just keep it running on Superbase's servers if you're happy with their pricing. And their pricing is quite reasonable. So I'm going to jump to the menu and jump to the pricing page. So you can start completely for free with unlimited API requests, 50,000 monthly active users, half a gigabyte of database space, five gigabytes of bandwidth, and one gigabyte of file storage. And this is more than enough for most apps to get started. Unless you're creating an app which stores a lot of files, a lot of images or videos, then your app is gonna to have to get pretty popular to reach any of these other limits. Um, when your app gets too big, you can switch to the pro plan for $25 a month, which massively increases all of your limits. And on this plan, you will be charged a little bit extra if you go over any of these limits. But again, I think your app would have to be pretty big and pretty popular to go over any of these limits. But everything we're going to do in this course can be done completely for free. So you don't need to worry about cost. Just make sure you don't share your app with tens of thousands of people and you definitely won't breach any of the free limits. But if you want to learn more about Superbase pricing, then check out the pricing page on the Superbase website. Get the full course, including authentication, row level security and policies, database functions and triggers, storage, edge functions, and running Superbase locally from makeappsacademy.com or click the link in the description.